Hey guys, Ramesh here from Java Guides. In this video, we are going to discuss few best practices that we can follow while working with strings in Java. All right. Basically, I have listed a few of the string best practices that we can follow in our day-to-day -day project work or in a Java programs. All right. And this video is especially for Java beginners who should know the string best practices. All right. So first is use string builder or string buffer for string concatenations instead of string concatenation operator that is plus operator all right so probably you might know this uh, best practice like if you have more string concatenation operations then prefer using string builder object over plus operator that is string concatenation operator all right as we know that in java strings are immutable and whenever we try to create or concatenate a string then jvm will create a new string object all right and if we do same in a loop then it is very costly okay so if we use uh, you know plus operator or a string concatenation operator in a loop while concatenating the strings then it's very costly uh, in terms of performance so always prefer to use string builder object to concatenate strings if you have more concatenation operations all right and string buffer is uh, you know acts like a string builder as it has the same methods except they are synchronized that means that string buffer is synchronized and it's a thread shape and it should be used in a multi-threading environment all right and string builder is not a thread shape and it is non synchronized so it's it gives a good performance in a single threaded environment so always try to use string builder while concatenating uh, you know uh, strings in java okay and string buffer string builder provides append method so we can use append method to concatenate, concatenate the strings so let me uh, let's analyze the you know the performance of all these threes like concatenation operator string builder string buffer with an example so let's write a simple program to demonstrate the performance of string concatenation operator string builder and string buffer all right so let me switch to the eclipse id and let me show you the performance of all these three use cases So here I have written a simple Java program to demonstrate the performance of these three use cases. For example, here we have used concatenation operator that is plus operator to concatenate the string. And this is a start date and this is the end date. And I have just printed the difference between end date minus start date. Okay. And here we have used string builder uh, to append or to concatenate the strings. And here I just printed start date end date and I have, I have printed a, a difference between end, end date minus start date and similarly for string buffer uh, I have printed start date end date and here is the difference okay so pretty simple Java program just to demonstrate the performance of you know concatenation operator string builder and string buffer all right so let me run the program and let us see the performance so look at here the output if we use a plus operator or a string concatenation operator then this is look at here the timing in nanoseconds and if we use string builder then it it takes this much of nanoseconds 9000 nanoseconds and if we use string buffer then it takes 18000 nanoseconds all right so look at here string builder provides a good performance while concatenating the strings okay so what we are doing is we are just uh, using a for loop to concatenate 10 strings okay and here is the result of it and by looking into the output of this program string builder is the best to uh, use while you know working with the concatenation operations all right so this means that try to use string builder whenever you have a more number of concatenation operations let us see the next best practice compare two strings by equals method instead of equal equal operator you might, you might know the difference between equals and equal equal operator we use equal equal operator to compare 
primitive types such as integer, boolean, character, double, float, etc. While we use equals method to compare objects in a Java. Alright, so let me quickly uh, demonstrate the difference between these two with an example. So look at here the code snippet. So let me uh, explain this example in an action using Eclipse ID. So look at here the code snippet. Uh, here we have created a, a string objects. Uh, yes, one object is created using string literal. Yes, two object is created using string literal, and yes, three object is created using new operator or new keyword. All right. Now we need to check the reference using equal equal operator, and we need to check the content of two strings using dot equals method. All right. So if you look at the condition here s1 equal equal s2 so this will print a true because s1 and s2 both are pointing to the same uh, you know string object. So if you know the string constant full right. So string constant full uh, is a special memory in a heap where basically JVM will store a string objects which is created by string literal okay for example look at here string s1 equals string so this object we have created using string literal so first jvm will store this object into a string constant pool because it is not already exist and it is first time we are creating the object and in a s2 we are creating the same object and jvm will check whether this string is already present in a string constant full or not if it is present then jvm will simply returns the reference of this object okay and it won't create a new object in a string constant full all right so remember uh, what is string constant full and how the jvm manages the strings to optimize uh, the performance or the memory all right so these are the basic concept you should know and in case of string s3 object we, we are created this object using new operator right so this object is already uh, always stored in a heap memory not in a string constant pool okay and here we are checking s1 equal equal s3 as i mentioned earlier s1 and s2 both are pointing to the same object in a string constant pool and this should you know uh, return true and s1 equal equal s3 so this object is stored in a string constant pool and this object is stored in a heap memory so this s1 is pointing to the object which is stored in a string constant pool and s3 is pointing to the string object which is stored in a heap memory so both are different right so that's why this will print a false and s1 dot equals s2 so as I mentioned dot equals method we use to check the equality of two strings or the content of two strings and this will print true okay this will return true and s1 dot equals s3 so this also print true because we are checking the content of the object not the reference all right it's pretty simple you might already know the difference between equal equal and dot equals method so just remember Whenever you compare two strings, then always try to use dot equals method. Okay, great. So let me run the program and let us see the output. So look at here, as I mentioned, S1 equal equal S2, it prints true. And S1 equal equal S2, it will, you know, return a false because both are referring to different, uh, you know, objects. And S1 dot equals S2, so this should return true because content of the both strings should be uh, uh, both uh, strings are equal and s3 s1 dot equals s3 so this should return true because both the uh, content of the both object are same okay simple call dot equals method on known string constants rather than unknown variable so look at here the code snippet if you know that you have some constant fix in your program then use equals method on known constants rather than unknown variables for example here is the constant we have defined in this class 
and here inside a process string method we are using equals method on constant all right so we know that it is a fixed constant so we can use equals method on it instead of calling equals method on this parameter all right so this parameter or just um, this parameter we passed to string a process string method right so this parameter might be a null and calling equals method on null variable might be a leads to a null pointer exception all right so always use equals method on you know known string constants rather than unknown variable so it is a very good best practice that you should follow and prefer switch statement instead of multiple if else if statement all right java 1.7 introduced the switch statement for strings if there is a scenario to compare multiple strings then use switch over multiple if else if statements so i have created simple program to demonstrate the performance of switch statement and multiple if else if statement so let me demonstrate this example in eclipse ide okay so here is the snippet code snippet using switch statement and here is the same code snippet using if else if statement and here we are just calling these two methods and just here i have uh, you know given start date end date and here is the difference between end date minus start date to just uh, you know print the the time that these methods will take so let me run the program and let us see the output the result of these two methods so look at here the switch statement takes 5900 nanoseconds and apl zip statement takes 11200 nanoseconds all right so there is a slight uh, difference between these two all right so you you might use a switch statement if there is a um, you know multiple conditions uh, instead of apl zip statement all right so this is one of the uh, best practice you can follow so next is use value of method instead of two string method okay so string class provides a value of method and two string method to convert object into strings and sometime we need to use string dot value of method instead of two string method so when to use it so look at the code snippet here uh, here uh, the object is null and we are passing null object to the value of method as well as two string method here okay value of method it doesn't throw null pointer exception but two string method throws null pointer exception because we are calling two string method on null object here okay so look at here the code snippet so value of method never uh, never will throw null pointer exception but two string method throws the null pointer exception because here we are calling two string method on null okay text is null so look at here value of method prints a null and two string method will throw null pointer exception okay so it means that uh, we are sure that object will never be null then we should use two string method otherwise value of method is preferable okay understand when to use value of and when to use two string so we are sure that uh, the object is never be null then we should use two string method uh, otherwise uh, value of method is preferable all right and next is use string utility classes so prepare to use string utility classes from different popular libraries because utility classes are tested and well known libraries and a lot of third party projects or internal projects we are using these libraries i have created my own string utility classes and i have published on my website and you can utilize these string utility classes or methods because i have tested it and i have frequently used these string utility classes in my project work okay so next is avoid duplicate literals if the code contains duplicate literals string literals can usually improved by declaring a string as a constant field for example look at here the code snippet so we have created a string object here and we are passing the same string object to the methods so instead of doing this we can create a string as a constant field like this so look at here we are using static final uh, keyword to 
create this string object as a constant field okay so you can remove this object from the method and you can create a string as a constant field like this and you can pass this uh, you know object to the corresponding methods like this all right so always try to avoid a duplicate string literals in your code and I'll, if you, you find a duplicate string literal then you can make a you know string as a constant like this great now look at here a few of the a uh, few of the other string best practices you might follow avoid concatenating characters as a strings in string buffer or a string builder dot append methods for example look at here we are uh, we are using string buffer dot append method to you know concatenate the characters so instead of using double quotes you can use a single quote here like this whenever you want to append or concatenate characters all right and you can use a double quote in, in case of concatenating strings okay and here is one more best practice consecutive appends should reuse so look at here the course code snippet so instead of uh, you know you are calling append method on object you can change the uh, append methods like this okay so this will give you a significant performance difference okay so instead of calling append method on each object you can just change the append methods like this okay great so all right so these are the few uh, string best practices that uh, you may follow while working with strings in java so i found these best practices really useful in my day to project work and in java programs so i thought uh, this might be helpful to you that's why i have created this video tutorial all right so yeah that's it guys subscribe to my youtube channel whenever i will publish such videos you will get notified thanks for watching i will see you in the next video